So what's going on YouTube? This is M.J Designs. I want to start off by wishing everybody a happy new year. Uh, I'm real excited to get started on these tutorials for the year. We've got a lot of good content coming out. This is one of my first videos actually for YouTube with me actually doing a demonstration of my technique. Uh, since I started an Instagram page, I got a lot of likes, a lot of comments and people asking exactly how I do what it is I do. And, you know, this is just me, my way of showing you. So uh, we're going to get into it today. What I'm going to do today is more of a, a breakdown on my general workflow for everything, for each illustration. And then each video coming after, I'm going to go more in depth on each step you kind of see today. So uh, this is going to be kind of more of a general video. Then moving forward, we're gonna get more in depth on each technique, each you know, each phase of the illustration. So right now we're gonna work on uh, a piece with Beerus in it from Dragon Ball Z. So the first thing I start off with, uh, I go into Illustrator every time. Uh, one thing you'll hear me talk about a lot is organization. I'm real big on organization, keeping things, keeping your layers named, keeping everything in its own layer everything separate your lines on one layer your color on another but you know, we'll, you'll get it trust me stick with me i won't lead you down the wrong path <laughs> so here we go first thing i like to do we'll go over here to our layers on the side um right now i have it named background if you double click on that layer you can change the name to anything you like so my first layer i'm gonna make uh, we call it sketch. Sketch, enter. Um, so now we're just going to start off with that sketch layer. Now we're going to... I have a background object here. For right now, we're just going to delete that. And just use the white canvas here. going to draw directly on that. Alright, now let's get into it. So first thing you want to do is grab a brush. Uh, B is the hotkey for brush. Hit B. And it's gonna load up your default, the uh, the v, the default brush definition, or whatever. If you don't see your brushes or nothing comes up, what you wanna do is you wanna go to Windows, Brushes, and it's gonna load in all your default that you have selected already or have created. What I do, and I'll get in in more depth, and I'll go and so I'll do a tutorial on just how to make custom brushes. I actually have some brushes that I've made already. So I'm going to load those up. Like I said, don't worry, we're going to come back and we'll get more in depth on how to make your own custom brushes. But on this sketch layer, I'm going to grab a brush, you know, and let you see what the strokes look like. And what we're going to do, we're just going to go in and uh, start sketching here. Before I do that, I want to drop the opacity down to about 20 or 30 percent. Let's go down a little bit more to 20 percent. Cool. So from here, what I like to do, go a little bit thinner. If you go to the top here, you can adjust your stroke, which is going to adjust the width of that brush. Go down to about 0.5, get a nice thin brush. And if you're wondering, when I make the brush stroke, I'm hitting Control plus Z to undo. And I'm literally going to go in just like you would on a regular sketch pad and start working out that image of, of Beerus, so the, the cat, and I want you to just keep it real light, you know, just like you would in a sketchbook, uh, I'm going to have him profile kind of looking off to the side with his hand over his mouth, like I said, I like to keep it really, really light, and if you're wondering, I actually don't use a, a Wacom tablet or a pen. I need to, but I've been doing this so long, I just use the brush, the uh, not brush. I use the mouse. But I think this year might be the year when I go ahead and get myself acclimated to that, uh, to a tablet. Get his ears up here. Like I said, keep it real light, because we're going to go in just like we're just sketching in a notebook, you want to keep it real light, we can go back in later and really clean things up. Let's say uh, you really like that line, you, you know, you want to get rid of a portion of it, you want to hit shift plus E. That'll bring up your eraser tool, you can go right in and erase whatever you need to. Just that simple. There you go. 
Control Z once again if you need to undo that. So I'm going to stop talking. Hopefully you're following along with me and you can go in and actually start doing a little bit of your sketch work as well. And I'm going to fast forward this part here. And we'll come back once I'm a little closer to having this thing, having the face hammered out at least. character. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to lock this layer. If you go over here to the right hand side of your layers, I'm going to drop that lock on there. You're going to make a new layer. And I actually put this one, uh, depends on your work style or what, what, what works best for you visually. I usually drop mine below. So you want to just click that new layer and put it below your sketch. So the lines that you're adding now are going to be darker, but they're going to come in underneath the lines that you sketched earlier. So the sketch layer is locked. I'm going to go down into the new one. Um, name this layer line work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go in there and add in our dark lines and really start tightening up the illustration. So for this we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to grab that brush but now we're going to go on 100%. And because we sketched it all out before and uh, I'm zooming in and out using the control plus and minus if you're not familiar with that hotkey. I want to zoom in and now since we have a nice guide it's real loose it's real sketchy but uh you can go in and start adding your hard lines based on the lines you drew already in the sketch layer. So brush on 100% black uh bump up the thickness just a little bit just just a tad. You go in and start just following the lines you already made course you can go in and adjust these lines because you want these to be a little cleaner. Since that bezier curves, once I draw a line with my brush, it's a bezier curve. So if you use the uh, hotkey A, it'll give you the direct selection tool and it'll allow you to control the points on that line and it gives you a little more control over the shape of that, that stroke you just made. So you'll see me doing that a lot as I'm going in and tightening up these lines. So here we go. One of the most important things is, I'll reiterate this a little bit later on when we get a little bit further in the illustration. You want your lines to overlap. You don't want any opening in this design. And I'll, I'll, I'll explain that a little better later on. The why behind that as well. So what I would do now, my normal procedure from this point is to go in and start adjusting my line weights. And what I mean by line weight, if we zoom in here, line weight is pretty much the line thickness. If we have, we're looking at these two lines here, right now they're the same weight. So what you want to do is go in and you increase the stroke on each one, which makes one heavier than the other. So that's what I mean by adjusting the line weight. 
and that shows a little bit more, that'll give the character a little more character, a little more liveliness when you go in and every line isn't the same way. What I did, I just kind of fast forwarded and went through, uh, tightened up some of the details. Uh, I'll zoom in here. I just really went through and varied my line weights. Here's another one. Let's change that up a little bit. There we go. So what you see now is just a lot of different line weights. Everything isn't the same. It doesn't have the same stroke width. And that gives you more of a dynamic feel to the illustration. So a lot of times you'll look at a picture and you can't tell exactly what's off, but it feels flat. And a lot of times people just forget to go in and vary your line weights. Because even with a real paintbrush, it depends on how much pressure you put down on the paper or the canvas. The weight of the brush, the weight of the stroke depends on how much weight you put down on that brush. And we're just trying to simulate that in the digital environment. So this is where we are now. So from this point. What I normally do, zoom out, I want to select everything, group it, control G, and then if you hold alt while everything's selected, you see your mouse, your pointer will change. And if you hold alt and click and drag to the side, you'll make a copy. Or you can just click control C, control V, whichever one works best for you. I like to keep a copy of my original curve just in case I want to go back and make an adjustment. Because what we're going to do now is go in while everything's grouped. The object, path, outline, stroke. And what that does, it turns all your brush strokes into outlines. So we can no longer edit them. Edit them the same way we could your, the brush strokes over here. With the Bezier curves. They're no longer Bezier curves. But we can just edit them. If we go here now, you see it's actually an outline shape for each stroke. Which is cool. Select those, and now you want to go to Window, Pathfinder Tool, pops up over here on the side. And we want to use the Unite function, and we're going to combine all of these shapes into one. So no longer are there different outline shapes, it's all one black outline shape grouped together. Next step, Layers, Line Work. Um, actually, moving a little too fast here. First, you want to select everything here. Make sure it's all one shape. And I normally just draw a selection around everything. I make a new shape. Look over here to the rectangle tool. Make a rectangle around everything, all my lines. Change the color to something that's not used. And then you're going to right click, arrange, send that to the back. Now, what we're going to do is cut these black lines out of the yellow shape we just put in the background which is going to allow us to change the color of each one of these pieces and start adding a lot of color to the character. So select the box that we made plus your lines. You want to go back to your Pathfinder tool. This time we want to use the divide function. Click divide and after you click it once you're not going to see a big change or anything change actually but now if I select the outside here now what should happen if you did it correctly is there should be one red dotted line tracing the outside of this whole illustration but if you notice we have a selection on interior details and all this other stuff that we don't want to necessarily get rid of so if I were to hit A my direct selection tool and then click the outside here and delete that it, give, it leaves behind the shape in the ear and the eye and the chest piece but everything in here was also deleted and that goes back to something I mentioned earlier which is having all making sure all your lines are connected so we're gonna go back we're gonna zoom in we're gonna go around the perimeter of our drawing See right here, that's enough. If there's an opening, you need to grab that point, drag it down, make sure it overlaps so there's nothing 
there's no openings around the outside of this illustration. I'm gonna go all the way around and make sure we're good to go. Oh, another opening. When you find an opening, just grab the point, grab the closest point, drag it up till it overlaps. Little pieces like this, I would normally go in and clean up, you know, before, uh, a lot before we even get to this point. But you know, we're just, we're just moving along here, we're keeping it loose. Going around the parameter, make sure no more openings, no more openings up. There's another one, no matter how thin it is, if it's an opening, we can close it up. Following along the edge of the ear, looks good. No openings, no openings, no openings, no openings. Cool. Select all our black lines and hit Unite again. Draw a box around that. Change the color. Arrange, send the back. Select both. Divide. Now when we click the Direct Selection tool after dividing and hit Delete, we're left behind with all the shapes we want on the interior of this character. The things that we're going to actually color moving forward. Now this is probably where we're going to stop for today. I'm going to show you, after doing that, now what you have is a, I can select just the face, change that color to, uh, let's see, you can't see it, it's off screen right now, but you can change the color of each one of these shapes on the interior and start to add color to this character. Keep that gold, keep that gold. The whites of the eyes. Little areas like this are small, but you gotta go in there. Color those as well. And just that quick, by using that divide function and subtracting the outside and leaving the interior, we can go in and add big pools of color to our image and really start honing it in from that point. But we're gonna stop right there for today and then the next time when we come back for our next tutorial, I'm gonna go in and start adding details, the shadows, the highlights, uh, really start giving it shape and three dimensionality. But like I said, if you like what you saw here, you wanna see more, if I went too fast on a certain area, please like, subscribe, and leave a comment down in the comment section and tell me exactly what you need me to go over a little more. Because I want, I, want, I want everybody to pick this up. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a very easy way to add color to illustration. A very easy technique and workflow to kind of get your stuff going. Looking back and forth in my layers here. But anyway, like, subscribe, let me know what you think down in the comments, and I will see y'all next time. Peace.